Good Friday afternoon. Welcome into the week six, six edition of the Playbook Pundits live stream here on SiouxCityJournal.com and on Facebook Live. I'm sports editor Zach James. This is assistant sports editor Shane Lance. And we thank you so much for watching and starting your weekend with us. Coming up in this episode, we'll go through last night's Metro game between East and Milwaukee Northwest. The other Metro games going on tonight, as well as three games we have our eyes set on in the Siouxland. Let's start off with last night's game between Milwaukee Northwest and Sioux City East. Milwaukee Northwest winning that game 37-24 East. Kept up with the Wolves in the first half. Then there was a weather delay that lasted about 45 minutes towards the middle of the second quarter. And that's kind of when Milwaukee Northwest kind of turned it around. Yes, East made a field goal late in the second quarter, but Milwaukee turned it on in the third quarter, scoring 20 straight points to take the road to win and having to drive two and a half hours back to the to the Des Moines metro area last night at around 10.30. Uh, Shane, let's bring, bring you in here. East dropping their third straight. They're now 3-3 three and three on the season. Do you think they can still turn it around in this last third of the season? I do. I think they can turn it around. They have plenty of talent on both sides of the ball. I mean, we saw early in the year when they took down uh, Sioux City North mm -hmm. that they're, they're able to dominate games when things are just clicking. Um, and I would, I think... I would be hesitant to blame that weather delay because I, obviously both teams have to yes. deal with that. So you can't really say that that was really the deciding factor, even though things kind of went downhill for yep. them after that. But it does make it tough. I mean, you get into game rhythm, um, you start doing your thing on the mm -hmm. field, and then, yeah, lightning just makes every makes you wait. Yep. You get cold. you got to rewarm up. Um, but, yeah, both teams have to do that. And somehow, uh, Waukee Northwest, they came out and came out stronger. The good thing about that weather delay last night, though, it only the clock out only reset once, I believe. It didn't re-lightning, and they had to restart the 30-minute mandatory clock mm -hmm. and all that stuff. So it was a short little delay for fans and players. It seemed like everyone had a good time during the timeout, and only a five-minute halftime, so they were able to play the second half right away so they could get Waukee home. But uh, it, it was it was interesting to see a brand-new school like Waukee Northwest have so much success against long-time programs like West and East in the last two weeks. Yeah, I mean, I, I remember when I was in, uh, I think it was ninth grade, we had a brand new junior high and high school kind of come along and start actually dominating. Um, and I don't know what it is when, when teams kind of get all those new kids. Maybe it's a, a motivation thing. I mean, those are kids that are getting their first opportunity that maybe wouldn't have gotten a shot to start at a, a different school if they mm -hmm. would have been going to a, another high school. But... Um, yeah, all, all credit to them. They've really started off their program history in strong fashion. I've been impressed. So the other Waukee team, Waukee Original. Waukee like, OG. Waukee Original, as I like to call them, come to town tonight mm -hmm. to face North. Uh, what do you see out of this game? You're covering this game, by the way. I am. Um, what do you see out of this game? Well, as we mentioned, I see Diedrich Sullivan's name right there. I mean, yes. last, last week, rushed for 75 yards on, what, 23 attempts. Um, they were held the 2.1 yards per carry last week, so you can tell that they, they definitely want to get that running game going again. Um, and they've got their quarterback, I mean, Carson Strobin. He's uh, still mm -hmm. kind of a young quarterback, even though he's a junior, getting his uh, his starting reps. Um, I kind of I anticipate seeing uh, a little more development out of him and uh, maybe Diedrich Sullivan turn it back on like he did week one when he won uh, Player of the Week. Yep. Yeah, that's your first Metro game in a few weeks. It's at Olsen Stadium mm -hmm. tonight. Yeah, since I covered, uh, was it SBL versus East a couple weeks ago? I believe, that's, ago? Right. I believe so. that's right. How can people follow you if they want to check in on the action from Olsen tonight? Well, on Twitter, I am at Shane M. Lance. That's L-A-N-T-Z, like a taco and a zebra. My One of my favorite foods and one of my favorite animals. Uh, so you can follow me there. Or just look for this sweatshirt, and you can physically follow me if you want. Such an ugly sweatshirt. We'll get to why we're wearing <laughs> what we're wearing you at the end. Jimi Hendrix. <laughs> I, I wasn't meaning the Jimi Hendrix part. I was meaning the color part of the, of the sweatshirt. West uh, will have to go to Des Moines tonight to face the Scarlets of East tonight. East. I mean, West, excuse me, coming mm -hmm. off a disappointing 74 to nothing loss to the Wolves last week. It's, it's kind of what we've been seeing the last two years out of the Wolverines. They, well, they had a strong 
middle, a strong start to the season, winning two games, but now they're kind of on a downslide. Yeah, I mean, they, like we mentioned last week, they had a couple weeks of confidence, and I don't know whether it was overconfidence or maybe, uh, yeah, that's not really something that I can speak to, not being involved with that right. program, but I don't know, maybe when guys get a little bit of a first taste of victory, I mean, um, I think it's it, maybe it's coming as a shock right now to kind of be backsliding and getting blown out like they did maybe. last week, but... Um, I, I would hope that they, they kind of see it as a, a motivator. I mean, you lose 74 to nothing to anybody. That's, that's not good. It's kind of a pride thing. I mean, you yeah. want to at least come back and, if not win, you at least want to make the game competitive. And that's that's kind of what I'm uh, anticipating from West tonight. I, I don't see another huge blowout um, on their end. I see a competitive game um, and maybe a win. Perhaps the most competitive game among the Metro lineup tonight is the next one we're going to talk about between Sergeant Bluff Fluton and MOC Floyd Valley. Mm -hmm. MOC Floyd Valley played Unity Christian really tough about four weeks ago, I think it was. And now here comes Sergeant Bluff coming off uh, a pretty big win against Sioux Center. It was a very defensive win mm -hmm. for the Sergeant Bluff Warriors. Now they have to go to Corvo Field to face a Dutch team who I think will be ready to go tonight. Yeah, I mean, both teams, They uh, at least, I think at one point, at least, both teams were ranked. Um, I don't I forget what MOC Floyd Valley was, but they were at least somewhere up there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if what did we have last week? They had a 500-yard uh, mark on the ground, or they're going to surpass the 500-yard yep. mark on they're the one ground. They're one yard. They need one, one yard. yard. So that's a, that's a milestone right there. Mm -hmm. I would say first play of the game, see what you can do. Yeah. Uh, but SBL, I mean, like we've talked about, I did a story about the, the Tylers a couple weeks yes. ago. Uh, Tyler Smith, Tyler Schenkelberg. Um, I see uh, kind of that connection staying strong, and you've obviously got Jacob Imming um, there at tight end and wherever else he wants to play. I mean, um, you never count out a team that has three big playmakers like mm -hmm. that. Um, and yeah, with with two competitive teams, I, I see a very uh, hard-fought game. I think it's going to be close. I think it is um, too. But yeah, I, it is a game that I, I think would be a lot of fun to cover. I think it'll come down to the wire, kind of a lot like the uh, the OABCIG game did last week. Yeah, yep, yep. And we'll talk about the Falcons later here in a second. But let's stick in the Metro for three more games. And mm -hmm. Helan travels to Carroll tonight to face the Carroll Tigers and the Crusaders. Still looking for that first win. I don't know if they'll get it tonight against the road game, against the pretty tough Tigers team. Yeah, what do we have here? I mean, the Tigers, they're led by senior quarterback Ethan, is it Lingling? I think it's Lingling. <laughs> well, let's, let's go with that. <laughs> Lingling. So he has uh, 30 cap passing completions for 526 yards and five TDs. Um, so he's going to be a, a, a tough opponent. I mean, yeah. Helan, like every, it seems like every week we say, like, this this is a kind of a gut check week yep. for them. Um, and I, I would be surprised if they pull out a victory just kind of with where they're at in the season. But um, I, I think at a, at a certain point, they, they have to at least be competitive in a yeah. game. Um, I, I don't see a win coming against Carroll, but I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating them at least not getting, uh, not getting blown Do out. Do you think it's too late for that gut check? I, I don't think it's ever too late for a gut check, but I think that uh, they might be their chances might be kind of slipping away at this point in the year. I mean, being 0-5... Um, you, you just kind of get into a momentum a little yeah. bit. I mean, when you keep losing, it kind of compounds a little bit. Um, but with high school kids, I mean, they're they're resilient. They can they can uh, they are. yeah, they really are. That's what I've noticed with high school athletes. They they want to win. Um, and so yeah, I see Helan. They can uh, if they pull off a surprise victory sometime in the next few weeks, it'll it'll definitely be a big boost for that program. South Sioux travels to Bennington tonight on the Nebraska side for a 7 o'clock matchup there. South Sioux is coming off two straight wins, but Bennington has outscored their last two opponents 70-7. to The Cardinals have done well these last two weeks. I just don't think they can get their third straight tonight. And yeah, they're kind of like uh, when I talked about with Elon. I mean, when a team gets a win and kind of gets that winning thing going, I mean, it's winning is contagious, it as is. they say in sports. So, uh, yeah, with with Bennington outscoring seventy to seven, it's going to be it will be tough. The defense is going to have a a big challenge on their hands, um, but. Shocking things have happened, like the Seahawks beating the 49ers in the NFC Championship game at the last second. So who knows? Things things could go uh, awry for Bennington at any point. Injuries could happen, or things could just fall apart. And at that point, South Sioux can pounce. Or like the Mariners can fall apart this weekend. It very much. As a, Mariner, a wild card. as a longtime Mariner fan, I I would never say that I <laughs> would not anticipate that. Well, we'll see. You you'll either be really really happy in Monday's episode or really really sad. You can Fin tell by my face. Yes. Yes. Finally in the Metro, Dakota Valley is at home tonight facing Millbank. 
They had a disappointing 27 to 13 loss against West Central, mm -hmm. and that's their second to last home game of the season oh. already. Um, they've wow. had a heavy home schedule, and it continues tonight. That is wild to me. I mean, we're what are we week six? Six. They said, which three weeks left to go in the regular season oh. on the Iowa side, and I think the Nebraska side too. That is crazy. It's just going so fast. But it yeah, is. for for Dakota Valley, I mean, like we've mentioned, they they have a lot of brand new starters this year. Um, one of the games that I covered, they they had a little bit of a bright spot uh, with a strong third quarter. Um, and so yeah, I think they're they're still just trying to build on yeah. that, get a little bit of momentum, get kind of find the the strengths to your team. Um, and just over the final few weeks of the season, try and build off that. Go in next year strong. Yep. Figure out what your strengths are, who your best players are. Um, but I guess at this point, it's just kind of all about development for that team. You wonder something else that's crazy? State class country is in three weeks. State uh, volleyball is in a month. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> this this job is just so crazy. It yeah. just keeps going very, very quickly. You're just like, you're just like the Energizer, buddy. You always, that's right. you always keep going. <laughs> that's right. Elsewhere in the Siouxland tonight, Westwood takes on Woodbury Central, and if you like r the run game, this game is for you. Head out to Mulville and check out this game tonight, because I think this game will feature a lot of running tonight, and especially from Westwood's Jackson D. Wald. He's right up in the categories among the state and yards, touchdowns. We touched upon it a little bit in last Monday's video cast, if you want to go back and check that out. But the Wolves, they're one of the top runners in the state. Woodbury likes to pass it a little bit more, but they're not afraid to run the ball either, especially uh, with Max McGill and Dallas Clunder. I think mm -hmm. it's going to be. I think this could be one of the top games in the state tonight. Absolutely. I mean, DeWald, we have him at 1,249 yards on the year. And on the other side, Max McGill, 585 rushing yards. Still pretty respectable yes. even at this point in the season. Uh, but, yeah, DeWald, I think, is going to be the star of the show tonight. I mean, that it's it's just fun football to watch. I've covered in my, my three years in Iowa, I've covered a lot of run-heavy teams. Um, sometimes it can be frustrating to watch <laughs> if it's not working, but obviously things are working for Jackson DeWald. So, if yeah, if you're out in that area, go watch a – uh, a top athlete do his thing. If you're in our northeast part of the circulation area tonight, go check out OABCIG taking on Pocahontas area tonight. Uh, the Falcons coming off a big, big win against Spirit Lake, but it doesn't get any easier because the Indians are ranked 8th in Class 2 A. They're still in district play. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the NL West. It's got a lot of good teams in one uh, division, one mm -hmm. district, and there's OABCIG right in the thick of it. Yeah, I mean, that's like we talked about in Monday's episode. I mean, OABCIG, they have just tons of playmakers. They have Easton Harms, who is mm -hmm. what our, our Siouxland athlete of the week this yes. week. Um, so, yeah, you can read about that. Was it yesterday's Sioux City Journal? Or it, was Wednesday's? Wednesday's. it was Wednesday's. Wednesday's Sioux City Journal. Oh, it was Thursday's, you're right. Thursday's. And then, yeah, I, I had a story or have a story coming out or had it today on the Internet, on the interwebs, as the kids say, about uh, Beckett DeJean. Um, we'll so, see that next, in next week's in one of next week's editions yep. of the journal. It'll be somewhere next week. Keep an eye out for it or find it at SiouxCityJournal.com. Uh, but yeah, guys like Beckett DeGene, Easton Harms, I mean, they've got tons of playmakers. Um, last week, I think, was a, a big uh, confidence boost after their, their first loss in 28 games. Uh, but yeah, I, I, it's going to be tough tonight, but I think after that confidence boost, and if Beckett can just run the ball, uh, like he yeah. said, he wants to run it a little bit more, a lot like Cooper used to do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if they can do that and the defense can uh, do their kind of bend but not break thing that they've been doing, I think they could pull this one out. Speaking of bending that break, West Sioux's been kind of doing a little bit of that mm -hmm. this season, and they host Ridgeview tonight at 7 o'clock, and their magic number to score is 35 because if they scored 35 or more so far this season anyway, they've won all their games, and when they haven't, they've lost. So I think 35 is the magic number for Ridgeview to hold the Falcons under, but I, I don't know if the uh, Raptors will be able to do that tonight. I, I think the Falcons get above 35 and get the win tonight. Yeah, when you score that many points on a week-to-week -week basis, something is just working for your offense. So at this point, I think they, they just need to keep doing whatever they're doing. I mean, run the ball, pass the ball, do... I mean, if, yeah, if you're scoring above 35 points every single week, I mean, it, you're going to be hard to beat. And post when the postseason comes around, I mean, at that point, you're pretty much unstoppable. So, yeah, I have, I have a lot of faith in that team to just kind of keep rolling. Just like I have faith in the 49ers this weekend. Make sure to check out SiouxCityJournal.com <sighs> to guy. check out uh, all, the, all our local stories, videos, photos. We've got a lot going on uh, this weekend, and you can check it all out at SiouxCityJournal.com. For Assistant Sports Editor Shane Lance, Visuals Editor Tim Hines, I'm Zach James. Thank you so much for watching. We'll talk to you on Monday. Go Hawks!